Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made this masculine set of cards using the January 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, find some tips and see how I made these. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time on my channel, I hope that by the end of the video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. And as always, if you're a regular subscriber and viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. So far this month, I've only made one sheet load of cards and my goal this year is to make two each month. So that's what I'm back here today to create with you. Earlier this month, I was looking in my card stash for a card that I could send to my dad for his birthday. And that's when I realized that I probably have a hundred that I could send to a female for her birthday, but I had like two that I could send to my dad. So I decided I needed to up my masculine card game. So for today's sheet load of cards, I will be creating a masculine set of cards. Now this doesn't mean that you can't send these to a lady. These would also just be good for a male in your life. The cards today were inspired by the July 2019 Paper Pumpkin Kit. This was probably one of my all-time favorites and they made lots of masculine appropriate cards. But some of the theme, especially on these three on the left, was ships and a ship wheel and nautical maps. So when I was at Michael's last week and I saw this hot by paper pad, I knew that I had to give it. It is a nautical feel, there's lots of navies and browns, and I thought this would make some great masculine cards, so I picked it up when it was on sale for only $5. And like I mentioned before, I will be using the January 2020 sheet load of cards. Now today, I won't be going over much of the cutting of the standard papers or like the pattern paper and the cardstock. I already have a video where I shared that process. Today I want to share with you how I decorate the cards, the stamping, the embellishments that I use. So if you want a more in-depth video of how you cut all the papers and put the cards together, I will link the January debut in the description box below and I'll also have it as a card at the end of this video. Once I start the actual process of making the cards, I will go to a voiceover. So if I leave you with any questions, make sure that you leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. But before we do that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the supplies and products I'll be using. If I pull in anything later, I will make sure to let you know. First off, let's talk about the stamps. I will be using the stamp set from that July 2019 paper pumpkin kit. I am definitely gonna use the happy birthday stamp, but I might also use the you've been on my mind and hello friend as well, we'll see. I knew when I saw this paper at Michael's that I had a very old Inka Dinka Doo stamp set that would go well with it. It is this sailboat stamp set here. I think this is 10 years old. What? I want you to realize from this is you don't have to buy the latest and greatest to make cards. Let's get out those stamp sets that we loved years ago and use them because there's nothing wrong with them. They still stamp. For my inks, I have chosen Knight of Navy from Stampin' Up and I have Sepia ink, which is Ranger. I got out some twine here for maybe an embellishment later on the card. We'll see a sheet load of cards, of course. I will be using the white cardstock for my sentiment or CS2. The navy blue will be CS3, which is the frame for the sentiment slash image. For the scallop strip down here and for the card bases, I'm going to be using craft cardstock. I have already pre cut and folded my card bases. And for my pattern papers, these are the two I chose. You have the sailboat paper and then a ship's wheel with that rope in the background. Let's go ahead and get crafty. Here is a look at all of the pieces that I cut from my pattern papers and my cardstock using the cutting guides. 
The first step in getting these cards together is to put the scalloped craft cardstock strip on the back of the smaller pattern paper pieces. You will notice here that I cut my strips a little longer than the four inches called for and this is just so I can center that nicely and then I just trim off the excess on each end with my non-stick scissors. And now it's time to do some stamping. I will be using this medium sailboat and the small solid colored one along with the happy birthday sentiment from the Stampin' Up! set. You'll notice that I pulled out my Sizzix pad and this just helps when you're using clear mount stamps on blocks. It gives you a little cushion on the bottom. Because I want my sentiment to show up over the larger boat, I am actually going to do a second generation of that larger sailboat. So I will stamp off once on this scrap of paper and then stamp that in the lower left hand corner of my focal point piece. The small sailboat then just gets stamped full strength as does the sentiment, but for that I am using that navy ink. I have been trying to decorate the inside of the cards more lately and on the inside of this one I'm going to kind of mimic what I did on the front except I will not be stamping the happy birthday. You might notice that the twine that I am using is different than what I showed you at the beginning of the video. That is because I realized I wasn't going to have enough of the other kind to finish all of these cards. So I cut 12 strips that were 14 inches long and then to put those on the card I folded each piece in half and then I put a double knot on the left side close to the loop that was probably an inch to an inch and a quarter away from the edge. You'll see here I knotted it once and then I knotted it again right on top of there. I thought that just made that knot more obvious since this twine was thinner. Once I had that knot made, I got out some glue dots that I had left over from a paper pumpkin kit and I placed one about three quarters of an inch from the left side on the pattern paper. Then I cut that loop in half and I placed the knot right on top of that glue dot. To ensure that my strings would stay where I wanted them to, I did put a couple strips of adhesive on both sides of the back of this and then once I had my twine arranged on the front, I just wrapped it around the back and pressed it into the adhesive. You'll notice there that I did put some adhesive on the front of the card too and that was again just to kind of keep the twine in place and that little adhesive will be covered up later by my focal point. Now we can start assembling our cards. The first thing I do is place one of the large pattern paper blocks at the top of the card front and then I am going to adhere the smaller strip that we put the twine on and I really made sure to get adhesive over all of the twine on the back just to help that stay a little bit better.
The next step was to mat each of my sentiment pieces with that navy blue cardstock. Once I had all of those done, I pulled out my foam tape squares that I get at the Dollar Tree. I put four on the back of each focal point and then placed that on the card front. And here is a close up look at a couple of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this masculine set of cards using the latest sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.